Hello everyone and welcome to episode. Today we have a very interesting topic which we think all of you should be interested in the enterprise and the topic is outsourcing or uh, contracting. There's so many terms used uh, within the industry. It sometimes is difficult to figure out which is outsourcing, which is contracting. And these are the things we will talk about. And today we have, of course, Kumaran, who is the chief mentor and the CTO for Tiny Magic. Uh, we have Venkat, who is the CTO for Aqua Connect. We have Raja, who is a entrepreneur and an architect and uh, so many things which uh, he plays so many hats. Uh, farmer. Uh, farmer, <laughs> right? So, <laughs> so he, he's a multi-talented personality. And we have Nataraj, who is an architect with uh, with Cognizant. Right. So, Kumaran, what do you think? What 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 should the enterprise be? You see, outsourcing is not a new thing, right? See, the whole market in India is grown out of this concept of outsourcing from the from the Y two K phenomena, right? We remember all of us, some of us at least, remember the Y two K phenomena, uh, which brought the whole software revolution in in in, in India, right? And that outsourcing flows from there. And now we are in a situation where there are so many of companies within within india even it companies and non it companies who need these services and the services are not that easily available um, in sometimes you don't need the service for that long right and that's that's one of the reason for outsourcing so what what are the things which come to your mind when you think outsourcing i think firstly this outsourcing is not a one episode thing probably we can do a 10 part series around that because it has so many facets to that right uh, so i think let's just understand what outsourcing actually means right mm -hmm. i think uh one of, how i look at it is if i'm going to get 10 people on contract okay i'm uh, now whether they sit inside my office or outside my office okay it's like let's say body shopping kind of a thing mm -hmm. i wouldn't consider that as outsourcing Mm -hmm. I mean, okay, so to be specific, yes, it is outsourcing technically, mm -hmm. but if you double click on that, am I outsourcing technical work? No, I'm not outsourcing technical work. Mm -hmm. What I'm outsourcing is the HR processes behind that. Right. Managing their provident, managing their assessment, appraisal, background check. This is what I have up. So within that, if I look at it, I'm outsourcing the HR capability of a team. Right. But in most of the cases, that whoever, let's say I get 10 guys on contract and I'm calling, I'm outsourcing my work, whether they sit inside my company or outsource my company, that time I am still managing it. Right. Right. What they do, I am still managing it. Their quality of work, I am still managing it which means I haven't really outsourced anything from a development perspective. The project manager's work has not come down. The architect's work has not come down. Mm -hmm. They have really not outsourced anything. Mm -hmm. Yes. Instead of one developer on my payroll, I got no nobody else. So from, and when I look at it from an architect's perspective or a project manager's perspective, my life has not changed because I'm outsourcing. Yes, mm -hmm. the HR manager's job has changed. The CFO's life has changed. But as an architect and a PM or an IT manager, my life has not changed. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's become a little more complicated now. Previously, I had more control over this person. Now I have lesser control. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. And I cannot assume a lot of things. Like previously, I could say, you know, if I have a contract for two months, after two months, who's going to take care of that work? I have to think about that also. So it's mm -hmm. actually a lot of things has increased for me when I do outsourcing. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the first point that I would mm -hmm. like to make regarding that. Uh, so, so body real, shopping in your view is not real outsourcing. So it's not from yes. a project manager or an architect or a tech leads perspective. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can just mm -hmm. others can yeah. chime in. Yeah. So uh, Venkat, what do you what do you think? What do you think uh, in your scenario uh, outsourcing would mean? What is the kind of outsourcing you do in your organization today, actually? Um, I got a request to do an outsource. So mm -hmm. uh, for a 
Kumran has briefly explained what is outsourcing. Like I'm not uh, going to that point. Mm -hmm. And I, I'll tell you, from my point of view, whenever you are getting some request, uh, we need to do outsourcing. First, you need to think, do you need outsource? Mm -hmm. We need to understand uh, your perspective because um, I will tell you the uh, live example and I have planned a project to deliver uh, for uh, two months and my CEO uh, comes and asking me, I need this project in a uh, deliverable in one month is is cutting out 50% of time. Mm -hmm. So now uh, I'm just thinking, okay, I planned for two months. So it is not something like I planned for the under this project, mm -hmm. uh, uh, under manpower. So mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that if you give the hundred people, I cannot done it in one day. Mm -hmm. Right? That that planning needs to be split it accordingly. Whether I can put more people, whether it, it can be done or not. So one point I wanted to make here is that okay. Um, First of all, I, uh, there are many unknowns you need to be analyzed before accepting anything. Mm -hmm. That's what I am trying to understand. See, okay. for example, mm -hmm. so it, uh, I'm just, uh, I don't know, like I, I'm telling you that layman's perspective, mm -hmm. like not in the architecture See, perspective. All of us, because, all of us are, yeah, this is uh, what, all of us are layman I'm going through. It comes to employees, right? <laughs> so, because we are not all okay. HR people. None of us are HR people. So, so our perspective is always going to be how it applies yeah. to technology. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, now um, I'm just, I'm just thinking. So, okay, you want 30 days? I'll give it 30 days. And now I'm um, planning it in 30 days. What is the MVP, which mm -hmm. you can? Use it for your uh, ground team. Uh, ultimately, the, the application which you are giving to be, it is, it's supposed to be usable for someone, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm uh, then uh, I'm arguing with my, my CEO. Okay, if you want 30, uh, I mean 30 days deliverable, and take this um, the the good to have features. I will deliver it with the must have features. Mm -hmm. Go with the um, the team. This so, so, so you're avoiding so yeah. this way you're avoiding the need I'll, for outsourcing as much as as much as possible i'll try to avoid mm -hmm. uh, and when maybe when i you, think on when that you, point right yeah what is yes. your resistance to outsourcing what is the yeah. problem like take three more developers what is the okay. problem that comes to your mind that hey oh. getting two freelancers is not going to help me what are those problems okay the one problem my understanding is we are working on in the um, different uh, design pattern and i don't know uh, uh, how um, i don't know uh, about his capabilities like uh, right. how you would be accommodating so uh, he he has not come and uh, add uh, some line of code from my uh, uh, <laughs> repository right until unless he understood the design pattern what is the uh, uh, where each model should uh, sit so the integration uh, how to integration write, yeah, that integration team. part it, for for him at least it will take two weeks to learn to to come uh, to align with the team okay but deliverables in one one month <laughs> i cannot i cannot train him in 15 days and and get it delivered by uh, one okay, month so right? maybe to be specific it's not exactly training but mm. orient right yes. yeah orient okay so yeah. you have even I have if a you, different view here. yeah go ahead yeah. just one one thing <laughs> i'll just make clarify whatever so basically even if it is let's say one framework whether it is dotnet or anything that guy is excellent in that but then you would have a different way of design and implementation mm -hmm. for him to understand this is the philosophy we are taking in our project and this is how we need to develop our classes or interface to convey that itself there is roughly around two weeks it takes which means two weeks is really not a productive time for the person coming in right so i think that is the resistance how do i orient them to my context right that context switch takes that time i think that's the point venkat is trying to right. yes. make yeah yeah exactly okay, okay. raja go ahead yeah so so the, the point about uh, the uh, the time reduction right this is a typical project management issue it's not an outsourcing issue actually so even within the company this is, might happen right so uh, let's not confuse between uh, the outsourcing and the project management issue right so let's mm -hmm. keep that apart right uh, from from an outsourcing
outsourcing perspective, right? Because I'm one of the beneficiaries of outsourcing, you know, the mm-hmm. jobs and the entrepreneurship, everything falls that into that, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and if you look at the three t- three types of outsourcing the company tends to do, right? Because I'm part of the outsourcing company who took the work from uh, mm-hmm. the big companies and also mm-hmm. part of the big companies who, who give outsourcing to the uh, service companies, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I see three things. One is uh, if there is a dollar arbitrage, right? Is there is a cost reduction that we can achieve, first thing. Second thing, is there a scalability, right? If I want to do something pretty quickly with the resource which I don't have, I want to develop something which I don't have, right? So second thing. Third thing is a specific skill set, okay? Mm-hmm. These are the three, three perspectives the company will view it, right? But where the company successfully outsourced or failure in outsourcing is about what is their strength and where they can outsource, right? That mapping is the key parameter that most of the companies misses completely, right? And I completely align with uh, Kumar in terms of uh, hiring a resource, either a freelancer, or it's just a contracting. It's not called that as outsourcing. Mm-hmm. It's just like extending your team, right? Mm-hmm. So, But outsourcing is about a specific phenomena I, I thought the, the evolution of outsourcing now is actually SaaS. Mm-hmm. Currently, I don't want to have, I outsource my IT department. I want this operations to be done yeah. through a software, right? And that's the evolution so, of that. Right? I think that's so, it. I think just, just pause for a second. I think that's a great point that you made. Any SaaS is mm-hmm. actually <clears throat> technology capability outsourced. We don't realize it, but that's actually outsourcing. Great point, Raja. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. So I think it's a great boon for the business guys, because if they really identify what they have, their strengths are, their weaknesses are, and try to break that weaknesses by getting the outsourced company to, to achieve the business goals, that's the mapping that business guys have to do. Raj, I have a question for you. So you said that this is the place where a lot of organizations miss out, right? You have any sort of an example where you have seen that there is a wrong kind of outsourcing being done where they did not realize what they were doing. Do you have any sort of a uh, counter example? Lots, lots, okay. lots and lots. Okay. Uh, I, I've even in the startup world, right? Most of the accelerator programs uh, that runs in uh, the startup communities in France or Canada, where I'm part of, and I'm part of uh, the technology company when I was work, uh, from my, I was supporting them as a technology partner, right? Mm-hmm. They just have an idea. But in, in Canada or France, there is a government funding that happens if you have an idea, mm-hmm. right? But they don't have anybody to uh, support them in terms of technology. So they were looking for the partners, right? And that idea validation and getting that into technology support is one of the streams or revenue generation that we make from our service company. Mm-hmm. Okay? Uh, and it, while we do that, we really have to sit with the uh, CEO of the company or the founder of the company, really understand where their strengths are, what they can, because if you look at top level, right, there are four things. One is, uh, you know, the technology piece of it. Other one is actually the strategy and vision. Third one is operations. Fourth one is marketing and sales. I put these three pillars to them, four pillars to them, and ask them where you really fit. Mm-hmm. Right? There could be technology founders itself, actually, but they don't know how the Put, to put a strategy in place, how to sell it, how to create a story out of this, right? So those kind of things, right? The second one is they don't know how to op- do the operations, right? So where exactly they lag, right? And try to figure it out where exactly they can get an outsourcing company to help them, right? So, and most of the companies misses this. Most mm-hmm. of them misses this. I'm not talking only from a startup perspective, even for uh, the bigger companies. For mm-hmm. example, this is a pretty pretty cool period, right? I because think, of those Raja- much destruction. Let, let yeah. me again say, again, you make a very great point and I'm sure we want to capture that, right? So you actually split it very nicely. There is a vision. Any company which wants to outsource work, they have a vision and a strategy which needs to be implemented. Then there is operations, which is going to, or let's say the next one is actually the technology, the development. Mm-hmm. Third is the operation and fourth is going to be the sales and marketing. And I think they have to be very clear of the four pillars which pillar are they want to outsource i think it's very important for the outsourcing company to be clear in their minds what funk capability they want to outsource it's a very good starting point go ahead Raja. yes that's how i approach because uh the clients and try to see where exactly you want help and Mm -hmm. we try to provide that help 
So mm -hmm. that's the way we approach outsourcing actually. And it's a great phenomena coming up with the SaaS model and the technology automation in place. I think the whole revolution of uh, cloud is also kind of outsourcing. That's what I, I see it. Right. So uh, Nishant, quick context. We are talking about how can we effectively outsource work or is it relevant or how it is possible in the enterprise space? So Raja, anytime you need to leave, you, you go ahead, you can leave. We yeah. wanted to get your ideas in before you had to uh, sure. leave. So thank you thank for you. that. Maybe Raja, you can actually share one thing, right? Uh, there's a good, bad and ugly, right? Mm -hmm. um, maybe before you drop, I think you worked on both the sides, right? So maybe you can give one instance as a person who you outsourced, what went wrong? right uh -huh. and when you got work outsourced to you what went wrong maybe these two things if you can share i think that would be hmm. really useful so so um the companies that uh, I, I talk from a service company who get the projects right so mm -hmm. the biggest problem in that is the vision is not passed on to the company they just give a module or they just give a a small perspective of what they were doing, right? Unless the team is aware of the end-to-end -end picture, it won't fit into the whole game, right? And and that's true with even within the company, right? CEO has a mm -hmm. mission, yeah, yeah. how to put it on to everybody within the team, right? And if it's outsourcing, it's further more difficult, right? So that vision statement or the goal is not passed on to the outsourcing. They just put it as a BRD. That's a big problem I see. How to map the BRD to the goals is what we have to work on. That's what my first 10 years, I figured it out that it has to be goal-based, it's not BRD-based. And I, I, it, ironically, the outsourced guy gets the fall for it. That is the biggest problem. Exactly. This is, you know, outsourcing is bad because they didn't do this right, they didn't do that right. And the blame actually shifts on the outsourced partner rather than the one who actually handed off that work. Very good point. I think that kind of, yeah, okay. Yeah, the second part of it, right? Uh, yeah. When uh, when I was outsourcing to the service companies, right? Mm. Uh, I, I put this vision and everything, right? But the the, the service companies already got some back and they want to sell. <laughs> right? And try to get that away, right? That was the biggest problem for me. Just, just erase everything from your plate. I have something. Please look at my thing. Don't give me something which I don't want, right? So getting, uh. that, getting that garbage out of the whole conversation itself is very difficult. It will take... A, Please 10 sittings to get the garbage out. Mm. Think, oh, okay, this guy is okay. stubborn, so we cannot do anything. So let's talk about business, right? It takes 10 meetings to do that. Okay. Uh. And that's exactly what I don't want to do it in part of my entrepreneurship when I was doing a service, <laughs> right? So I, I just listen and listen, and listen for two to three meetings just to understand and put this four pillars where do you want help? <laughs> right? That's how I, I go. I, I think it's kind of, uh, it's actually a drill, drill down or a much more sophistication of what. Venkat just said, right? Context, yes. context yes. of outsourcing, both to the provider and to the consumer, right? I think great points, Raja. Yes. And and I think what what one Raja what what Raja mentioned was the kind of relationship you have with the outsourcer, right? Which is, with if you share the vision, you are looking for partnership, right? You are not looking for a job just which is probably you don't you don't want somebody to understand. You just want thing A to be moved to thing place B and that's it. And that is the kind of outsourcing you're looking for, right? Which is different from what Raja explains is you want them to have a stake in your vision, right? So the success has to be defined on achieving that vision rather than completing that point A to point B task. I think that's a, actually now it gives me a little more clarity of thought and that as I'm just listening to this, right? Now, again, when I'm talking about outsourcing, I, as a guy who is uh, consuming it, right? Consuming an outsource, I have to be clear in my mind, is it a long-term outsourcing or is it a short-term thing which I'm looking at, right? And I think that's very important. This is, we're getting even more detail. Assuming I'm trying to do outsourcing, mm -hmm. is it going to be long-term or if it's short-term? Mm -hmm. If it is is long term, then I have to invest that amount of time, right? Like as Raja said, it's whether it is two weeks or three weeks, you would have to invest that time. And for somebody who you just want to use on a short time basis and just let go, then we have to decide whether do I have to really do that investment. Now, I may take a company 
spend the two weeks of investment i will get only two weeks of work done but i will say guys when i want i will come to you next do i have the confidence that that company will still be there two months later i will say you know come and do something for me will they be there so that is one thing right the other one is basically i'll say you know i just want them a point in time fix i don't need them to understand that that is also another piece of work which we could do but for that i have to do some additional work so in that case i have to see how can i get it done by removing they don't need any contextual information how can i um, like in software world right how do i develop interfaces for the work that i'm doing and i'm not talking about software interface right right so i think th there's very good examples and parallels to what you just said right for things which are very well understood where these quote unquote interfaces are well defined and the outcomes are well understood it is very easy to outsource for example nobody thinks twice about outsourcing their food service right mm. outsourcing food service is a no brainer for anybody says we cannot hire cooks and do everything ourselves we know this is a standard way of of doing it everybody knows how it is i done. think it yeah. to be specific right it is like every time you order on swiggy you have just yeah. outsourced you are outsourcing cooking. exactly yeah you see again swiggy is also an intermediary in some place right yeah. there there is a restaurant and all we are outsourcing is the delivery right and of course they are putting all the other things around it to enable you to swiggy you know, we can call it as yeah. a facade pattern right yes it is a facade pattern it is it's basically hiding the restaurant behind it <laughs> yeah correct right? so so that's that's i think a, a, a good example so let's let's listen to nataraj if he has uh, his uh, any any views around how he has seen outsourcing work or not failure work. with outsourcing nishant yeah. uh nataraj i think I'll, let's go in nataraj first and yeah, shantil yeah. shantil yeah. yeah hi so uh yeah in standard charter right we have done some couple of outsourcing as a resource okay mm -hmm. so the challenge uh, what uh, we have faced is right the outsourced resource okay are not actually you know up to the mark of you know what uh, the employee actually delivers okay so mm -hmm. for example right uh, so we actually used to work like you know 12 hours okay so uh, but if it is an outsourced employee right they come in on time and they try to go out on time okay they say you know that's how we are getting billed okay eight hours is the time which we can spend so that is something which i have noticed okay okay the other side right outside the it okay if you look at outsourcing i'm just thinking about this uh, whole uh, thing like you know auto the ola all of those rights uh, aren't the uh, those are also will categorize as an outsource just trying to understand that yeah Because you see that that's a that's a standard service right so i i think probably we need to uh, uh, maybe narrow down the definition a little bit because anything can be outsourcing any service which you buy, buy can be considered as outsourcing but uh, uh, the context we probably should focus on is uh, within an within an enterprise it organization right Okay. when you when you look at outsourcing work which is expected to be an output of that enterprise it organization right that is that is where we are focusing on but See, we can take examples like i, I think natraj we would have had this discussion about capabilities right any capability can be outsourced if it is defined well so a maid who comes to our house to do the cleaning of utensils and vessels that would be true outsourcing if the person in the house doesn't do a quality check okay. of whether it is done or something like that right housekeeping services like in corporate companies which is actually true outsourcing but in lot of houses the we do a check on first you do this second you do this third you do this kind of a thing then it is like a contracting kind of a thing yeah. so you are correct in telling when i get into a cab i'm not thinking whether he is driving right or things like that right so it is that management piece and the nitty gritties of how the capability is getting executed if i am switching off from that then that is a high quality outsourcing but if i'm going to look at the nitty gritties of execution then it is more like i have contracted the hr aspect of it but then still the other things is still within me right okay so uh nishant uh, 
what is your uh, take on outsourcing experience with experience. have you had experiences outsourcing in your thing so far whether as consumer or as a provider yeah in in my experience uh, that's what i was thinking like outsourcing mainly mainly happened in a different way like uh, as you know since we are building a product and when whenever we we had a say big implementation and and our capacity is not enough to do the entire thing within the timeline what kind of outsourcing actually so far we have tried out is outsourcing a part of the interface or or a completely a, a new interface to a different team a, like a product based service team within the organization ah okay okay got it so 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 i am uh, my doubt is whether that is inner sourcing or outsourcing that's what my a great okay <laughs> actually yes inner sourcing is also outsourcing only but the concept is pretty yeah. much the same i think the only context advantage that you get when you do a inner sourcing is that the organizational vision is there the organization stake is there they kind of already follow the organizer policies and culture that is the only advantage that you have yeah that is only actually, <coughs> theoretically that is the only advantage but unfortunately nothing happened in that in in our case like that that uh, overall it was not that much a good experience like when we what went wrong i think it's it's kind of interesting to share that yeah. what kind of yeah. went i'm sure it has got to be something to do with interfaces and context but then let's correct, get correct, to correct. the understand the details what, what went wrong in the sense like uh, uh, basically that particular the, the the team who did that part was not quite aware of the entire ecosystem so the thing is like and second thing like uh, not sure since this is an outsourcing happened within the uh, organization or they uh, their thought was like things this this job was uh, they are doing as part of uh, the requirement or the uh, revenue opportunity of another product within the organization that much focus was not there with, and as a result what happened is they were not deployed right resources skill resources into that project see the difference is like when we give a, uh, when you have an outsourcing kind of thing for an external completely external partner we would have much more focus or we would have much more say legal obligations <laughs> also with it but but oh. here what happened is you, you got my point right nishad i got it but just on a i mean fun or a side note right it gives us an illusion of which are better in control but i don't think we really do that good a job even if it's an extern but it it's yeah. slightly better but not what should i say yeah. quantum's better yeah correct go ahead go ahead so yeah that, that, yeah that was the scenario because they were not deployed a right resource or skilled resource into that eventually what happens is like and that, that's another point that i i was listening to like when we give when we say outsourcing actually we should not involve in the review or those kind of things right that's what you're saying so there what happened is once once they deliver the end stuff to us and when we start integrating with our things start breaking means uh, the, we were uh, and later we started reviewing their code the code part they have given to us and we found lot of issues and we had to spend another uh, three or four sprints to correct the end that's the that kind of experience or or personally i have in in an outsourcing aspect very so, good i think yeah very good point yeah even even i want to make one point here so um, the six months before and kumaran would have known we also outsourced one project mm -hmm. and our entire team are like good at flutter and when we are approaching the outsourcing company like um, they said no uh, for a flutter they don't currently don't have an expert and they do it in react native mm -hmm. and and we are also somewhat comfortable with react native and we agreed to it that project period could be should be three months then uh, project is not i mean not de de delivered up to the six months it has then they are they are coming back and saying that uh we have estimated the uh, you, uh the resources very i mean uh, the resource very less so 
please give me more money because we are already spending more time. So they were they were negotiating at the point of time. Then we said no yes, because you agreed for uh, three months, you should deliver it. Somehow they have delivered it, and at the point of time after delivered, till now we haven't used it. So why I am saying it is that before giving the outsource, please plan should have a vision whether whether it is very useful future. Are you going to use it? And right. So if you are not using it, then what is the point of even uh, we were. We were spending two months of time for testing alone because that that project was complex. Like you no, know? so at the end of the day, um, if, if if for a company it's okay. They are spending and uh, uh, they don't. Uh, sometimes they don't care about the money. But for uh, for my team, employ like I put so much effort. Why they are not using it? That kind of uh, that kind of feeling is yes. coming. Yeah, that kind. Of, that feeling comes, you know, like for yes. for, for for employees. Like. Yes, I think so, it's kind of also related to uh, Nataraj's point, right? So, uh, and and what Venkat just said. Um, one thing that happens in outsourcing, right? Efficiencies in the system will come out very clearly. Mm -hmm. So, Nataraj, in your case, right? Like for example, uh, you were telling it's hard for they don't stretch beyond eight hours. Now, stretching beyond eight hours means actually what? Something got missed in estimation and planning. Right? Mm -hmm. But if it's an internal employee, they will take it. But once you cross the boundary, they will actually tell, no, you wanted eight hours, I'm giving you eight hours. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that is, so or like, for example, Venkets, the other part, I think it falls in governance actually, right? Uh, what am I estimating? How much am I willing to spend? So if something I outsource is not that critical, right? Mm -hmm. Then there is a problem. And I think I kind of miscommunicated something by telling Nishan kind of, should we review or not, right? Mm -hmm. Now, um, it's, so it's a part of planning, right? What am I going to outsource, right? Uh, is it a fair deal for them also? I need to think about that for it to work. Then third, how do I integrate what comes back into my system? I have to estimate for that also. Mm -hmm. we kind of tend to think once that finished component comes, it will magically go and fit into my thing. Yes. We think like that. Somehow we miss that point. The, I think this, this thing comes from manufacturing, right? This is like, this is you outsource some nuts and bolts. They said these are standard parts and they will come and fit together. Unfortunately, that does not happen with software. <laughs> that doesn't happen with software. Even in, in hardware also, they struggle. But then here it gives an illusion that, oh, it's, we can change it. See, mm -hmm. in, in the hardware world, no, they make a part with 3mm smaller. At least if it's big, they can make it small. But if they made it small, you cannot make that part exactly. bigger. That's why it means that's why the, the rigor of those is is very well established, right? Ah, I so mean, the interfaces yeah. or the specs giving out, right, will yes. be clear. So I think basically that planning is about how am I going to integrate? So Nishant, I think that part, right? I don't have to do a code check or a code review. Now I have to be very clear. So Nishant, for example, in your case, right? If I didn't give a coding standard to them, and if I didn't convey to them, then when I get outsource work, I will not look at the code quality. I will just look at whether it's functionally working or not. Now, after they have come back and then said, you know, I want my data layer to be in this class. I want the master to be in another class. That didn't happen. If I didn't give it as a part of the spec, then I should not check for that. That's a wrong review to do for the work. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. I understand. Okay. But there, uh, I think what what, Kumar, what you mentioned for the review was for the review of the employees, right? Their, their performance itself. But as a product, that, you still have to outcome, you have to still review. review of outcome. outcome. So yes. once it finishes and comes, right? The what we agreed on, I have to review. That's yes. the key point. Yes. Right. If I said I need three interfaces, three API calls, it will take this parameter and it will give out this. That is what I should review. I should not double click and then say, is the query written properly? Is the code written properly? That I cannot because that's not a part of contract. But if I was so specific, I should have said, I need a query which will return in two seconds. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have inner joins in my SQL query that you are writing. 
I don't want to have a function more than 10. That should be a part of my contract. If it is true, then I can review. But after the thing comes, suddenly I cannot start reviewing things which are not a part of the contract. Then it is not right thing. Now, now the here what happens in the real world is neither the people who are providing has that maturity nor the ones who are consuming has that maturity. And effectively at the end of the day, it becomes a blame game. Right? And it has not been neither they have accounted for it as in the providers have accounted for this governance and the consumers also have not governed it right and then it just becomes a gray area b bad experience yeah, yeah. i i think so, if, if you were to if you uh, nishad you have a point you want to make uh, on top yeah. of that yeah yeah just to add on what uh, kumar mentioned is like so uh, if you assume we are giving the development path to um, like four pillars initially uh, mentioned like if we give the development aspect to or the development path as an outsourcing thing and if we are clear that we are go finally going to operationally uh, or handle the operational part then should we have a clear vision on how we are uh, uh, whether this this operation aspect is aligned to our standard operational procedure and based on that thing uh, should we do a, a, a backward imaging or reverse engineering kind of thing like uh, we all uh, make these sort of governance should be contractually agreed when we give that to development right otherwise the operational thing should be a tougher job for us because it will be like an uh, apple and orange kind of thing because uh, it, it will not align to the standard things that we are following definitely we may have to um set up additional operational overheads or those kind of things for the outsource thing if, if, if it is not aligned to our expectations so, yeah. so my, my doubt here is like uh, is it practically feasible like uh, or is it happening in the real world like when we give something to outsourcing should we share the assume if it is a product and if we are giving a part of the things for outsourcing uh whether uh, from a contractual point of view is it uh, happening in the real world like we are giving the guideline the this is the design principle that we used to follow in the entire product or this is the operational mm -hmm. aspect this is the uh or the java standard or the coding practices we are following so i think it, all, it, all, all things are in a in a very large uh in large projects uh in a not suboptimal manner they do that so basically after a project is over there is a knowledge transfer that happens that that outsourcing team then goes ahead trains their inner team we have done that so it's a part of the contract right i will do knowledge transfer i will do training for them so basically yeah. the provider company will go and train their internal it like this is how you have to operate it and do it so yes that is happening but in a suboptimal manner uh, because why i would say suboptimal is what happens is the there is a demarcation between the development and the operational pillar that's where devops i think we just see all these things are connected now we're just transitioning into it it's a it's become a devops discussion now right now the operations right. team is there you give it to some xyz they throw some junk at me now i have to do that now they are always scribbing and complaining why they can't do it so essentially it's interesting so even though the development pillar and the operations pillar are separate but if the development pillar has to take a action the operations pillar should be a part of that they are not actually cleanly isolated i i, I think uh, um, I mean, I, as as a sort of a summary to the discussion there's there's something of course we can continue this thing in the future yeah. episodes also one thing which i realized is that there is a lack of maturity in defining how to do outsourcing in in the enterprise it world there is and it's not that the uh, there, there are of course unique challenges which uh, which software throws at them right which is the whole flexibility itself makes it uh, difficult to define things right but there is what needs to happen for uh, for better outsourcing is we need to learn from other established industries how they have achieved that right for example outsourcing is very common in construction industry right mm. a building a building is built by so many contractors put together it's not just one contractor doing everything 
right and still uh, and and there are multiple levels of outsourcing right yes. so for yeah. ex- for yeah, electrical uh, yes. thing is outsourced now the electrical guy will outsource it to one wiring guy one <laughs> transformer guy like that so there are exactly. multiple levels of outsourcing that happens and it's yeah. a, and it works right it so works very well right. yeah correct so, so i think that's where the the inspiration should lie right you need to learn from how outsourcing actually happens in these other industries right that's that is what should drive the maturity in the software and enterprise it industry is how do how do how does construction industry work with outsourcing let us learn from that right how do they define contracts right how do we make sure that this is at the same level of uh, definition right which which makes these contracts possible right of course con- construction industry has been around for hundreds of years right so it, they did know how, it is it has evolved right and maybe the software industry is 50 50 plus years old right at least at that scale right so i think that is where uh, the maturity has to come from how do we define these interfaces how do we understand contracting how, how do we understand what is an outcome what is the product right where, where is this how can you evaluate the service right because there is so much uh, gray areas right uh, like what nishan just mentioned should i review uh, the code should i put it in the contract that how the layer should be defined answer is yes to all of them right because if you want to reach where you are able to trust the outcome of a, another entity right which is could be a person or could be a company you need to be able to define that very very well right and it could mean if you if you value that whole structure you need to define the structure give it to them says this is a structure we want it in only then we will accept your outcome right that's that's sort of my conclusion any anything you want to last words you want to add kumar no i think it's good i think we probably will have to do some three two three more episodes to get delve into different aspects yeah, yeah, yeah. so so I'll, uh, i'll tell you one thing like the construction industry you are talking about yes this is a very good example but the construction industry itself no it is evolved from not hundreds of years it's the thousands of years because everyone <laughs> see from from the cave we have started constructing it is <laughs> it is it is evolving it is evolving yeah. from that so yes so yeah. like it might take some time yes we need to learn it from that yes yes that's a good point yeah thank you <laughs> good point good point so thank yeah. you venkat uh, thank yeah. you raja thank you natraj nishan kumaran of course uh, we hope you are interested in the content which you are listening and seeing on our channel uh, please keep coming back give Thanks. us your comments and uh, we are on linkedin facebook uh, your choice where you want to give us your feedback on youtube Uh, we'll be happy to listen to you keep subscribing and keep coming back thank you